Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. The much-loved winter feast is wrapping up for another year. Thousands have enjoyed the festivities over the last two weeks as stallholders prepare to bid farewell to the bumper crowds. The final flames before they burn out for another year. Winter feast wrapping up its 11th stint. It's been a really successful feast and we're so glad to see so many people coming out, getting around the fire, having a chat, trying some of the amazing food. Locals and visitors travelling from far and wide for the iconic offering, with organisers saying the event is becoming more popular every year. Yeah, people from Brisbane and Perth and Canberra just excited to be part of uh, the winter feast and um, soak up a little bit of hope. This year's feast lineup are boasting 80 stalls, including 25 new first timers. Vendors coming from across the state, serving up some of Tasmania's best produce and showcasing the state's culinary expertise. The reception's been great for our products, with it's a unique spin on well known Tasmanian products. Penzo Kitchen have travelled all the way from Launceston to deliver their sweet treats. While they're used to producing 100 tasty donuts a day, they had to raise the stake the winter feast, producing a thousand of these every night. Really good. It's been really fun. It's a lot. It's overwhelming. Um, we're not used to this sort of scale. Despite some of Dark Mofo's other events taking a break this year, it hasn't dampened the mood. It's a different feast, but we're so excited to have seen um, people come out in droves and really get amongst the midwinter. Now the painful 12 month wait until winter feast makes its return. Rebecca Gaydineris 7, Tasmania News. A successful home ownership scheme is expanding its eligibility from July 1 in a bid to get more Tasmanians into properties of their own. My Home shares the cost of houses with their owners and slashes the need for a massive deposit. For first home buyer Jared Ebden, a toy house seemed as close to home ownership as he'd get. With real estate prices spiralling, he figured it'd take years to save a decent deposit. He asked me 12 months ago, I wouldn't have said that I would have my own home and comfortably living. He and his partner didn't win the lottery or draw from the bank of mum and dad. They signed up for the state government's My Home scheme. We know that home ownership gives people certainty, stability and security in their lives. The shared equity program only requires buyers to have a 2% deposit, with the state contributing up to 40% of the property's value in return for part ownership. The system helping buyers onto the property ladder. The majority of people who are applying for it are first home owners, but you just have to not own a home. Since it started two years ago, more than 400 loans have been written under the program. Jared becoming Tasmanian number 1,000 to be helped into his own place. It was so exciting to know that we can change things, clean things without anyone's approval. And the program's expanding from July 1. Income limits for singles and couples are increasing and the government will now kick in up to $300,000 for new builds. That means that more Tasmanians will be able to uh, uh, live out the Tasmanian dream own their own home and have their own little patch of paradise. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. Glenorchy City Council residents have overwhelmingly voted in support of saving the popular War Memorial Pool, transforming it into a modern swimming facility. 89% of voters agreed to support the council urgently repairing and reopening the Glenorchy Pool. And when asked if the council should apply for future government funding to redevelop the outdoor space, 93% voted yes. The state government promised $5 million during the recent state election. The council isn't bound by the results. A Tasmanian butcher has been selected by the Liberal Party to run in the upper house seat of Nelson. Marcus Verme previously ran in Clark in March's lower house election where he polled highly. He says he's confident and ready to take on this next challenge. I want to be able to give back and... Uh, with the support of what I have locally, uh, I think I can really build on it and make a difference. He's eager and determined and dedicated to getting out on the ground, talking to the people in this community and delivering for the issues that actually matter. Independent Meg Webb is the incumbent member. The elections are expected to be held next May. 
Despite a close game against Geelong yesterday, dreams of making it to the finals are slowly slipping out of reach for the men's Hobart Chargers. Unfortunately, it's a similar story for the women's side, falling to 15th on the ladder and continuing their search for answers. With plenty at stake for both teams, it was the Chargers who hit back from an eight-point deficit to be leading at quarter time against Geelong United. The season, nice three down by Brown. Momentum swings continued throughout the game until the Chargers managed four in a row, opening up an 11-point advantage in the third term. He'll go to work. Oh, wow! With scores level and 15 seconds to go, it was this impressive play that put Geelong in front. Oh, oh, yeah. Get yeah. A late foul gave the Chargers a chance, but it was two missed free throws that ultimately cost them the game. It will be a Geelong win. Geelong win. Coming off a close victory yesterday against the Eltham Wildcats, Northwest Tasmania were looking to stay on the winners list. But it was the Knox Raiders who stood in the way this afternoon, proving too strong for the Tassie side. Just before we get done here, Brody Nunn will finish it off with a basket. In the women's league, Hobart slips further from playoff contention with two losses this weekend against Geelong United and the Mount Gambier Pioneers. Star guard Jada Jensen, vital for the Chargers, producing 46 points across both games. Jensen. Wide open for three, gets it to go. It was a similar story for the Launceston Tornadoes, defeated by the Eltham Wildcats last night, before losing to the Knox Raiders by 21 points, despite forward Lord DeVos's best efforts. DeVos attacks for two. The losses placing the Tornadoes at 17th on the ladder. Lily Thompson, 7 Tasmania News. In the NPL and South Hobart have secured their spot at the top of the ladder after winning an epic top of the table showdown against the Glenorchy Knights. It was South who remained composed despite handing the Knights two penalty shots at goal. Harrison steps up. Harrison converts once again. Goes down to the right this time. South Hobart also got the win against Glenorchy by one goal in the women's league. Scores were even until South managed to find the back of the net with minutes left in the game. The win now puts South Hobart top of the ladder, followed closely by the Devonport City Strikers. Good evening. Hobart 13 today for the last supper at the Winter Feast. Launceston 14, Devonport 15 and 13 the top for Burnie. Further across our island state, Friendly Beaches 15, King Island, Smithton and St Helens all 14. 13 on Flinders Island, Lowhead, Mariah Island, Grove and Strawn, Bushy Park 12. And a very special thank you to Peter Murphy who visited Liawini to personally report an overnight low of minus 6, warming up to just 8 degrees today on your Murph. We experienced cloudy conditions Conditions about much of the far northwest, the southeast, southern Midlands, lower east coast, and parts of the eastern ranges today. A low pressure system will approach the south of the Bight with a series of frontal bands extending through eastern South Australia. Tomorrow, a high over New South Wales and southern Queensland will extend a ridge over the east of the state. Northerly winds 10 to 20 knots, although increasing up to 30 knots about the west during the morning. 10 to 15 knots across inland lakes with swells at 2 metres in the west and south. A strong wind warning has been issued tomorrow for coastal waters between South East Cape around to Stanley. A road weather alert also continues for the central north, north east, central plateau and the Midlands forecast districts. Partly cloudy for Hobart tomorrow, 13 degrees, cloudy also in Dover 12. Ooze will wake to a morning frost following a high of 11. Another frost for Launceston 13, showery for Devonport and Scottsdale, sharing an expected top of 13 also. A shower or two for Burnie, 13 there, 13 also for Strawn but with partly cloudy skies, 14 and increasing showers for Stanley. Partly cloudy for St Helens and Swansea, 14, an icy start for Ross, zero overnight with 11 degrees forecast for tomorrow. 
Looking a little further now into next week, Tuesday showers about the northwest extending towards the north and down the west coast during the morning after another morning frost. Wednesday showers more likely about the north and west contracting further to the far south and Bass Strait Islands. Thursday showers remain about the west, far south and Bass Strait Islands with little expected to reach the east coast. Mainland conditions now for Monday. 18 on the way for Perth and Sydney, fine in Brisbane 22, partly cloudy in Melbourne 13, showery in Adelaide with 14 degrees. And it's also partly cloudy right now in Hobart, 9 degrees, although clear in Launceston with 7 and also clear with 8 in Devonport. That's all from me this Sunday night, Lou. That's all your news for this weekend. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.